this is max track radio motorola max track uh, older around 1992 again this is a mobile that goes into vehicles and it could also be used as a uh, desktop configuration inside a base station inside a cp command post or your home or office or whatever uh, this nice little case here is a uh, custom made aftermarket i think and it just we call it uh bolts the uh, mobile right on top of it the supplies underneath and it's one nice little tidy sort of uh, looking thing so if you want to reconfigure this to a mobile inside your vehicle you just take it out of its case and uh, transfer it back there the connections in the back are the connections that would connect to the antenna and 12 DC power now these radios require another this again is is sort of like uh, 12 volts to turn the unit on it's configured to where if you turn your ignition on it applies 12 volts to this line here which in turn will turn on the radio despite having 12 volts constantly main power going into the main unit this is more like a signaling to an on and off switch if you will uh, you could configure it to be on all the time or use the switch or if you got a toggle switch use a toggle switch uh, I use a combination of all three to where I could turn it on mainly with the ignition uh, if I need to I could shut it off with a toggle switch and turn it on without the ignition with a toggle switch so it gives me the best best of all worlds but that's how most of these uh, commercial uh, mobiles are configured it's your choice the newer ones you could have the hardware you know the wiring to do that but then there's a configuration within the programming to enable or disable that function whether to use that for that function or not on the newer uh, model radios but anyway to continue this is the max track really good radio they're beginning to fail out there now because of the same reason I said before those capacitors in here are changing value this thing is so old that uh, and you know the environment sort of kinda temperature would cold hot cold hot would would you know render those components freak out this radio here uh, you can't tell without you know actually doing some dirt time with the radio the surplus radio to find out if that's the case or not same thing these these boards are recapped so you can give another breath of life to them the programming on this is through the microphone jack this here is the microphone jack here's the radio interface box oh this is the radio interface box this is the programming cable that will program this radio at this point this box here could also program various other models or radios the max track and there's another called the GTX and the Merit track uh, there, there's a I don't know about the Merit track but there's a host of other radios that are similar to this that would it will program and I have an example later on of another radio that's a different model it's a Motorola different model but it uses the same radio uh, adapter here so this goes into there and uh, this RG RJ48 cable will go into the microphone jack just like so again this is a DOS operated program this is the program right here uh, Motorola Max Track made in 1992 or this particular version has been uh, programmed or used in 1992 and uh, let's see what happens this program could run on some of these newer running PCs in the DOS environment or an emulator and it has been confirmed so the, the compatibility between old and new gets quite a bit better around this period of the max track so you guys may able to program this very easily I know today I'm able to program this very easily using the DOS emulator the the Microsoft DOS emulator or virtual machine that that they provide which sucks I don't like it this DOS box program totally kicks, kicks his ass as far as this application and also you could use a USB stick 
a bootable DOS disk that, that would run this program and then it'll run off of pure DOS in that environment. But we're going to use it with this DOS program. I like to, to consolidate all my programming into one platform that would do it all for ease of uh, serviceability and, and just for basic ease of the whole operation. And we're going to try the DOS box again using this thing here. So, okay, turn on the rib box. The program is running, everything is interconnected. F3 to get safe program code plug, F3, F2 to read from code plug. And the cycles is 3000 cycles, the uh, default uh, level. On the last radio, the XTX, that was the level that it was at, set at. And so I didn't have to play around with the speed up and down like I did the uh, uh, Centaur X9000. So okay, let's read it. F2, accessing serial bus, so far so good. It's taking a little bit long, I get kind of nervous. Radio is not supported by this software. Consult manual for list of error codes. Alright guys, I found the problem. Uh, let me tell you straight off the bat, I'm doing this cold turkey. What I'm doing now is actually the first time I'm doing this. Except for the boat anchor over there and the XTS, the older finicky radios. I did those a couple of days ago, so uh, because all those, those are the hardest. Uh, unlike that model there, anything newer than that model, the uh, Centaur X9000, uh, the programming does both the, the display and the radio itself. They're not separated. So uh, another advancement, I guess, in this technology as the years went by. What it turned out to be was I was using the MaxTrack trunking program. Uh, I had to install the MaxTrack conventional program. This is just a conventional radio only. Uh, the MaxTrack trunking will program those radios that are trunking capable. This one is just a plain Jane conventional radio. So I was using the wrong program even though they're both MaxTrack uh, model. So that's what happened there. So it's the same thing. Uh, these Motorola programs pretty much follows sort of like the same look and feel as far as the DOS programming. So again, MaxTrack conventional, I already configured this and all that good stuff. Conventional, uh, this was made in December 1995, 20 plus years ago. Pressing the key to continue. I know for sure, oh, I had to speed up the cycles. It was defaulted at 3000, I, I bumped it up to 7,660. 7,067 cycles for this to run uh, properly uh, or as far as talk to the radio back and forth reliably when it was old, when it was slower uh, it took a while it wasn't doing anything it just went through the motions and it just stayed in that motion uh, I sped it up in it and it picked up okay everything's connected everything's on rib box on let's read the radio F3 to get safe program code plug, F2 to read the radio, accessing serial port, and there's the status line there, and it's reading. Again, the DOS Prox program would work on the Max Track radio. And you have to experiment with the speed and all that good stuff to make it reliable. There is a method maybe to sort of automate that particular function once you get the numbers all dialed in. If you have various radios to configure that are older, I mean, it just depends. In my case, I'm the, ex the extreme headache of, of the gamut here, where some of you guys might just stick to one or two models or whatever. It's done. So I, I shut this I shut this off here so there won't be any talking or any corruption between the two. So F10 to get off this screen. Uh, F4 to change the programming or modify. F5 for mode configuration, the frequency and all that good stuff. And there it is. That's what was in that radio.
and now I can change it to whatever. Uh, let's program this code plug back into it. Let's see if it'll do that because reading may work but not writing. F10 get off there, F3, F2, F7. I gotta turn this back on. F7 is to program. Oop, not F8 is, I'm sorry. F2 abort. F10 exit. It's F8 to program into radio. F2 to continue. It kind of warns you before you go any further. F2. Let's see if it'll start talking to it. And from this point on, it gets easier as far as, you know, the compatibility, like I said before. But I'm going to show you it all so you could get a taste of what you might get into. And it is writing to it. If there was any handshaking problems or anything with this, it would have stopped and give you errors like you've seen before. So I'm pretty confident that this will work. So I could service this piece of crap here. It's a good radio actually. Uh, small, uh, lightweight, and but tough at the same time. This thing has been going on for 20 years in service and it still is in service out there. There's quite a bit of vehicles out there that still have this setup. Okay, let me show you something else since I'm at it. Service alignment, service aids, board replacement. So let's press F2. In this configuration here, let's say you're a service technician, you could replace boards and, and with this here it'll it, it would uh, configure the new board to, to be replaced in this machine here in case something goes wrong. Uh, let's just go to alignment just for simplicity sake. sake. Press F2 and it's actually talking to it. By this time it's constantly talking to the radio and at that at that screen you could change the deviation how high or how low your voice volume will be when you transmit uh, power adjustments and this is important this is the adjustment that we change constantly and that is the reference oscillator uh, they drift back and forth and you need to measure it and bring it back because if, if it drifts too much uh, you'll be transmitting off frequency and your reception will kind of suffer as well so that clock uh, reference oscillator is very important to adjust so in this case here you need the software to sort of talk to the machine there to kind of align that particular uh, function along with the transmit power. Uh, on Motorola radios and some of the new ones, I don't know about these mass tracks, but I'm sure the Spectras, which we will cover here pretty soon, and the newer ones, the uh, CDM 1200s and XT, what you may call it, XTL 2500s and so forth, you could do it from the faceplate, those adjustments you don't necessarily need the software but it's recommended okay let's move on max track radio is a go with this program now this radio here is a radius SM50 uh, it only has two channels this radio here is like the cheaper poor version of the max track models uh, this is mainly, what do you call it, uh, marketed towards like uh, businesses, you know, taxi cabs, uh, school buses, and so, so forth, where the Mac tracks is uh, marketed towards uh, public safety, police, fire, EMS. There is a difference, cheaper electronics, uh, not as sturdy as the Max track, but very good nonetheless. Uh, there is another version of this called the Radius uh, SM150 I believe uh, I don't remember this is the only example that I have but it has more channel capabilities uh, this particular model is a UHF radio and let's see if we could talk to it using the fast PC here the modern stuff with the uh, DOS box programming here and this has got a peculiar little glitch or, or quirk that is kind of different that you may see out there. Okay. 
SM5000 Radius SP50. That is the program for this particular model here. You would think that it would be compatible and they could talk to each other, but there's a quirk to this. I'm going to go ahead and talk to that. It comes up. This was made in July 1998. So turn on the uh, interface box. F3, get save program. F2, read the program. Acetophil, do it. It's accessing the serial port. Error number two has occurred. Serial bus error. Made sure the radio is powered on and all that good stuff. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, programming cable into the microphone jack here. And this uses the same box as the Max Track and the GTX radios. So uh, you don't change in equipment here often. So you could buy like this, a Max Track and a GTX, and, and you'll still have the same sort of support element. So that's, that's pretty cool. So let's do this again. Click this in there. Radio's on. Box is on. Alright, let's try this again. F2 to read. Oh, gotta turn it on. F10. F2 to read. And it's reading. But check this out. Error number 21 has occurred. Radio not supported. Press F10 to abort. It went through the motion to read it. You see the status bar. This program supposedly is the program to do this radio, but something is not jiving. Maybe this radio, the firmware has been changed. It's a couple of versions older or, or newer. Who knows? In any event, I cannot talk to this radio. And it's a shame because it's a UHF radio. It's 15 watts. Uh, it's surplus out of the books and I could totally put this where I could use it in the GMRS radio service I'm not gonna give up. I'm not gonna give up on it, but I will Seek to, I will search out to see if there's anything out there that I could do about this but uh, That is an, a perfect example of what could happen to you if you get an eBay special uh, Yeah, it's working. It has worked. I know it's worked before uh, you got all the devices, the antennas, the cables, and all that good stuff, but you can't talk to it, despite all this other stuff here sort of lining up. I mean, as far as the cable, rib, and the programming, but there's some sort of differences, and uh, that's something to look out for. Doesn't happen often, but once in a blue moon, and I got the blue moon here, it happens. All right, let's move on.